Alrighty, my friends, welcome to another video here. My name is Bijan, in case you're new here. And if you are new here, please be so kind. Subscribe to the channel, hit the thumbs up button. You guys know the deal. So anyways, um, what we're going to do here is just another quick trade recap here. This is going to be on a losing trade for you guys. Um, I figured might as well just drop another losing trade video. I mean, there's really not much to go over in these losing trade videos. It's like, all right, I did this, I did this, this should have happened, but it didn't. And then that was kind of that. Um... And, and then nobody watches these videos. Watch, guys. The, the, if you're watching this video after, like, a few months that it's been, like, you know, released and, you know, published, watch. Go compare it to my other videos now. No one watches these. You know what I mean? Like, no one watches the videos of the losing trades. So, you know, I don't really care to make videos about them. But like I always say, I always do show my losses whenever I have them. I'm, whenever I would post on Instagram my profits, I would always show my losses. Um, now, this week, I haven't been posting on Instagram because I've been trying to keep myself again to come to YouTube and try and, you know, put some content here. That's how I make myself make YouTube videos for you guys because I'm like, all right, I cannot post it on Instagram. So if I don't post it on Instagram, it motivates me to get it on YouTube. So here we are uh, motivating me to put it on YouTube. Uh, so for those of you that follow me on Instagram, don't panic if you see I'm not posting my profits. You guys know I already gave you the heads up that I'm going to stop doing that, uh, especially come 2020. I'm going to start making some nice changes. Uh, those of you that have been following me from the beginning, those of you that took advantage of the things that we've had to offer, you're in a great position. Those of you that haven't made a decision yet, you might miss out on an opportunity. That's all I'm going to say. Um, but anyways, so now that I've done my rambling, you know, I always have to have a dose of rambling in every video. You know what I mean? So anyways, $200 loss today. Um, it shouldn't have been a loss. It should have been a profit, to be honest with you guys. But, you know, <laughs> like, you see what I'm trying to say? This happened, that happened, and then such is life. So, uh, let's get into it real briefly here. It was a total end up being a $200 loss on the trade, but it was a profit for the majority of the day. Um, so I got into, it was very simple here, 10 contracts in then out. Um, usually I don't really put more than like, well, first of all, you guys, if you go look at my, my, uh, what you would call it, my trading history, I never really put more than $10,000 into one trade. My average trade size is usually, usually around five to, well, actually around 3,500 to 7,500, we'll say on average, um, which puts me at like $5,000. So yeah, just an average trade here, 10 contracts at 545 each. You guys know the deal by now. You should know um, the way options works. One is equivalent to 100. So if you had one at 545, it's one at 545. So one at 545 if we have 10 of them what does that mean that's 5450 that this trade cost so as i always like to say guys i keep it fair too i say in my other videos i say hey you know if you had three thousand dollars and you knew what you were doing you too could have made one thousand dollar profit hey i'll keep it fair too guys you got five thousand four hundred and fifty dollars you know what you're doing you could also lose two hundred dollars too you know what i'm saying i keep it fair it's, it's that's the name of the game you're never going to find anybody that wins every single trade and if you do they're lying to you you know what i mean so that's besides the fact. We're going to try and keep the rambling to the minimum here. Uh, so it costs 5450 Now, I sold three of them at 606 I should have sold at least. I, they should have all been gone by that point, to be honest with you guys. But I got a little greedy. Um, man, dude, those emotions. You really got to be right on. You got to remember, there's a reason why you had your plan. So anyways, besides the fact, um, I sold three of them. At 606, so 3 times 606 is 1,818. Then I sold 7 of them at 490. So let's do 7 times 490 is 3,430. So we're going to add 3,430 that we got from selling this to the 1818 that we got from selling that and that gives us $5248. So we bought the trade for 5450, then we sold the trade for 5248. And that's where you get the 202 loss. For the sake of simplicity here, we'll just say we sold it for 5250. So in 5450, out 5250 total. That was just to kind of give you guys like a, a summation of what went on, how this worked. And this is where I say in my other videos when I'm like, yeah, guys, you know, if we when, I, when we say we're putting $5,000 in, that doesn't mean we're going to lose $5,000 if we're wrong. No, it means, you know, once we realize we're wrong, we're going to be able to sell it for less, $490, for example. You get what I'm saying there? So 
Again, that's besides the fact, you know, I'm not trying to ramble too much. I'm just trying to give an example based on my other videos, how I'm always saying, you know, it's like a used car. You know, you buy a used car for 5000 thinking you can sell it for six. You find out something was wrong with the car. You find out you needed to fix something or you find out it wasn't worth what it was. You found out it was only worth four. You're not losing. You're not sending the car to the junkyard. You're not losing the whole 5000 You You have a plan. You respect your plan. You say, if I'm wrong, I get out at this level and that's that. So anyways, that was that now that we explained everything here. So... I got in at 7.29, we'll say 7.30 for the sake of it, and then a few hours later at 11.05, I sold three of them. Now, I should have sold at least five right there, I should have sold half, but even before that, I should have sold all of it, it should have all been out of the trade, I got a little greedy, um, but besides the fact of me should have, would have, could have, all that, let's talk about what I did. And this is where I talk about the idea of lock in some profit. That way, if the trade goes back against you, even if the trade goes right to where you started from, you're still making profit. So if it gets to the point of where you're getting out of the trade at your risk level, where you would have taken your loss, your loss is going to be significantly less because you already locked in some profit. Now, had I locked in five out of the set, out of the ten instead of three, I would have broken even just about. It might have been like a fifty dollar loss or a hundred dollar loss. Now, if I didn't lock in anything, it would have been about a four hundred dollar loss, maybe five hundred dollars. So, this just is it, kind of explaining the detail there. Now, let's just explain it on the chart here. I got in right around this area here, right here at the, let's 727, move over to the right area, 729, you get it, 730 area, guys, right around here is where I got into the trade, um, and again, you guys, like I say in my other videos, we're not going to talk about why I got into the trade, because we're going to be here for hours, there's like so many different things that goes into it, I'm not one of those guys that just says, yeah, you know, once it goes this, you do that, you know, there's more than one thing that we do, I, tr I try to tell my people, we're like doctors in the market, you know, they're, your doctor, you go to the doctor and something's wrong with you, he, he puts his little stethoscope, I don't know what it's called, I think he listens to your heart, you know, he puts it in your ears, it's really cold when it touches you, that thing, he listens to you, and based on his reading of the body, he can tell you something's wrong, he'll listen to your heart, and a normal heart might say beep, 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 then he listens to your heart, and it says beep, 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 beep. And then he says, oh, no, 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 no. This guy has a heart problem. We got to fix it. And then all of a sudden, everybody wants to say, oh, my God, he found out we had heart cancer. How did he know? Guys, get, come on, grow a brain here. He learned. He went. He educated himself. He understood how the market works. He understood how the body works. So he knows when this says that, oh, something's wrong here. If you listen to your, your back and listen to the way you were breathing in and breathing out, he can. you get what I'm trying to say? You kind of read the heartbeat of the market. So I'm reading the heartbeat of the market a lot among various other things. I'm saying, oh my God, the dang market is flying. Meanwhile, this guy isn't doing anything. Alrighty then. So imagine if the market is flying and this guy's not doing anything, imagine what's going to happen to this guy when the market starts to pull back. Oh my God, the market started to pull back. Guess what this guy did? Exactly what we wanted him to do. But anyway, see, that's just one of the many other things that I use in my trading strategy. See what I'm trying to say? I try to drop a little one thing here, one thing there. The last video talked about this. The previous video talked about that. But at the end of the day, you see it's still one hour of videos and you guys still were barely scratching the surface. And again, I'm not trying to talk about my course so much because I'm not really pushing that anymore. You don't have to learn from me. You guys can go do it however you want. But what I'm trying to say, there's a reason why it's structured the way it is. There's a reason why it's like 12 hours long because I explain everything to you guys. I explain why I pick a certain strike, why I pick a certain expiration, why I get in here, why I get in there, what I'm looking for here, what I'm looking for there, this, that, all these other various things. I call them flashlights. But anyways, again, with the rambling on my end, you see guys, I'm just such a great rambler. I wish there was a job in rambling. I wish there was an award for rambling. I'd be number one because I'm still doing it. Anyways, so I got in it right here. Now, I was supposed to lock in half at the 296, and then I was going to hold the other half to see if I could get 295, 295, 50. I would have been out guaranteed by 295, and that's what I was hoping for. Unfortunately, I got a little greedy, and I was going to try and hold all of it for 295. Point being, respect your plan, guys. It would have been at least a $1,000 profit if I respected my plan. Let's go see. Why, how do I know? Because it was at a $700 profit when I... Where is this guy? Come on, buddy. What are you doing here? I got to go the old-fashioned way. You're making me run over my 10-minute limit, 10 minute limit here. All right. 297.5 put. Here we go. Yeah, 
Yeah, he went up to 646. Right around 918. What happened at 918? Right here where I should have gotten out of the trade. We play. We paid 545 for it. It went to 645. Like I said, it would have been at least a thousand dollar profit minimum, is what I was expecting out of the trade. Um, and then if it did go down to the 295, it would have been maybe like 1,300 on the profit. Um, but whatever, woulda, coulda, shoulda. You guys get the point. It ended up being a loss. It was a $200 loss. Small loss, regardless of the fact. You guys go look at all my profits. They're usually above the thousand dollar mark. Some of them are around the 700, 800 dollars. Uh, if I'm going really, really hesitant and I'm only putting like 2000 3000 in the trade, it might be like a 700 to $500 profit. Uh, but I don't think I've taken a profit less than $500 this year, to be honest with you guys. Um, so, but that, that's my point is that even my smallest profit, $500, let's say, this was half of that. You know what I mean? So that's what's going to get you there. You're not going to be able to win every single trade that you place. I mean, shoot, I should have won this one, but I got a little greedy. Um... And that, that was pretty much that. Now, before I get off track here, let me finish up where I got out of the trade. So I ended up closing out three of the 10 right here because I could tell he was starting to hold this 296 area and started to reverse a little bit. And again, that's where I'm saying I should have sold five. Why am I getting greedy again when I saw that I already missed what I was getting greedy about? I should have taken the opportunity and respected my plan of at least closing half. That was my plan. Anyways, I didn't. So that was that I sold three instead of five, which, you know, Hey, at least I locked in some of the profit because if not, I would have been looking at about a four or five hundred dollar loss. Uh, that's besides the fact. So it was about seven hundred dollars here, uh, maybe like eight hundred. So when I sold it all, I could have sold it all for an eight hundred dollar profit right there. But no, I got greedy. You guys know me. Uh, well, actually, no, you don't know me like that. I don't get greedy. I don't tend to do that that often. It was just this one trade. Um, but it, I mean, I do it every so often, maybe like once a month here. I get a little over, you know, excited. But at the end of the day, I never let it get me, get the best of me. Ended up making like a huge loss out of the trade. So once we got above my risk area, which was the 298.50, basically, I like as soon as we pierced that area, I was out. I didn't want to deal with it. I didn't want to let it because I knew it was just going to shoot instantly to the 299. I mean, if it had time, to be honest with you, if it, this wasn't happening right at the end of the day, I, I mean, it could have probably gone to the 300. Um, so we'll revisit it again, you know, just to kind of see what happens tomorrow. We'll see what, if we can get closer to the 300 area, see how he treats it, and we'll go forward from there. Um, but that's pretty much that, guys. I locked in, like I said, some of it here, as I could see that we're starting to reverse. And this is why I say, guys, when you really know what you're doing, you know, I knew I could tell it's starting to go up. Obviously, that's why I locked it in. You're not going to lock it in if you think that it's about to drop more. You get what I'm trying to say here? Um, so, you know, you could have flipped the script. I could have locked in my little profit and said, all right, let's go. Let's get calls now, blah, blah, blah. But I don't like to do that. I don't like to, you know, flip the script too much. I don't like to jerk myself around or let the market jerk me around. I just stick to my trade for the day, and that was pretty much that. Um, I actually was trying to get into Disney in the morning, but I missed my entry. I traded Disney on it yesterday. Um, this was from the video that we did yesterday. Let me clear this drawing set so it doesn't mess up. Um, I try, had an order. Literally, I put the order at 151. The dang thing only went to 160. Anyways, that's besides. And then it shot right up higher. Anyways, that's besides the fact. Um, this is referring to another video, previous video. If you guys wanted to see about this, um, that was that. But yeah, that's all I did today was just that Netflix. There we go. We lost a little $200 profit. Well, well, there we go. Lost a little $200 profit. That doesn't really sound right. But we took a $200 loss there. Um, but just stay disciplined, guys. I mean, hey, it could have even just tricked me out and went below even more. But hey, I would have been happy with that happening because I would have respected my plan ultimately. And that's what's going to get you there in the end. Because if you don't respect your plan, for example, let, oh, I'm going to start rambling, guys. I'm going to cut it before 15 minutes, I promise you. But let's say I got out right here and then I just ended up completely dying. Ah, so now I'm going to start jerking myself around because then the next trade is going to come. And I'm going to say, yeah, man, your plan was, you know, get out at the 298.50 area. Last time you did it, it, jer it jerked you around. It played with you. So now this time... You're not going to respect your plan. You're going to say, ah, oh, well, you know what? Let's see if we go to the 299.50. And this, this, it just happens to be the time that it actually goes to 299.50. And you're going to look at it and you're going to be like, oh my God, I was only, I was only supposed to take a $500, $400 loss. I'm at like a $700, $800 loss. What do I do? I'm not used to this. Let me double up. And you're like, wait a minute. At the end of the day, you're not supposed to have done that. You should have even been out of the trade, but now you're acting emotionally. Now you're doubling up and then it's going to pay. Because it has to be that one time, you know what I mean? It just works out that way. That's how the market does. Now it's shooting to 300. Now you're at 300. You're in a bigger position than you should have even been. You doubled up, and now you're at a $1,500 loss. And you're like, oh, my God. Panic. Panic. Let me double up one more time. And now you're at a $3,000 loss. We're at 301, and you're like, all right, I'm cutting it. 
We're above 300. We're shooting at 305. And then as soon as you cut it, boom, it shoots down. And you would have to, guys, I'm telling you, the market will jerk you around like that. So how do you not let it jerk you around like that? You just respect your plan, even if it tr tricks you out, whatever it is, because a small loss is something we would rather take than letting it blow up and be a big issue at the end of the day. And this is what I've learned through my 10 years of drive. I've been trading for 10 years now. Yeah. Well, Give me like two, three more months. It'll be 10 years. But besides the fact, I've been over nine years trading, but this is what I've learned through the part of the process is that, you know, market, I went through my fair share of being slapped around guys, you know, especially because I didn't have anyone to teach me. I didn't have anyone to learn from. I, I had to learn this stuff myself. There was no guy on YouTube telling me, hey, Bijan, don't, respect your plan. Do this, do that. There was nobody like that. Even if he was, you know what I mean? Like, even if he wasn't giving me all the details of what his strategies were in his little 15 minute video, he wasn't even saying, hey, you got to have a plan. I had to figure all that out on my own. Um, so I, I trust me, guys. I'm speaking from experience here. There's a reason why I'm trying to say this stuff. Respect your plan. Respect your plan. It's because that's what you really got to do. But I'm rambling too much. I'm over the 15-minute mark. This is supposed to be a quick video. No one's going to watch it anyways because it's a losing trade. But I would appreciate if you guys do hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. Hit the thumbs up. And, you know, just check out the links in the description below. I always have something new going on. You know what I mean? I might be announcing a new YouTube channel. Who knows? I'm making one every single week now, it seems like. Uh, I'm just kidding. I'm just enjoying my time. I'm rambling. All right, guys, I'll talk to you soon.